Well, welcome everyone. We are so excited to have you. My name is Sarah Pearson. I am the assistant conductor with the Symphony of Northwest Arkansas, SONA, and I have with us today our music education director, Natalie Fernandez. Welcome, Hi, Natalie. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Well, we are so excited here at the Symphony of Northwest Arkansas to highlight um, specifically music in the schools here in the month of March. And we want to just kind of talk a little bit about um, some resources to help our teachers as we're looking at celebrating this month and just all of the exciting things that we have going on here at SONA. And Natalie has um, a bright there in the field working locally, because obviously I'm not in town. I actually live here in Tennessee. But I just want to talk a little bit about SONA and where our standpoint, where we come from looking at music. And uh, really since its inception, um, music education for SONA, uh, we're really passionate about bringing in live music and arts uh, integrated into our education programs. And I think countless students over the years, I don't know if we have the stats on it or not, Natalie, how many we have reached, but I know there's been thousands. Um, but our hope is to help foster the next generation of musicians and our audiences as we continue to focus on increasing access to live music uh, through open rehearsals, discounted and free tickets to concerts, and, off, and ultimately in the month of April, our, um, our concerts that we have, and we have a SONA mentor program. And maybe you want to speak to a little bit of this, uh, Natalie, as we get started. Yeah, so um, I've been very excited to be a part of the SONA team. And I uh, just coming up the end of this week will be my six-month SONAversary. So yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> um, the thing that I've, I've started right off with getting my feet wet was... Um, coordinating and, and facilitating our mentors program. We've already had a string mentors program that's been running for the last two or three years. Um, we have five string musicians um, who are associated with SONA who go out into schools and work directly with students. They uh, The thing as a teacher, the thing that makes this program so great is that the, the classroom teacher is not having to um, you know, sacrifice their own uh, instructional goals. Like the mentors walk in and say, what do you need me to help your students with this week? And so a lot of times it's either preparing for concert music or um, uh, assessment materials or uh, all region uh, audition music, that sort of thing. Um, so they go in and work in small sectionals or um, and do some one-on-one -on -one work as well. It's really just whatever the teacher needs, which is awesome. Um, and then I'm exceptionally excited uh, as, a, as a former band director to share that this past January, just last month, we launched the winds and percussion portion of our mentors program. And that has been off to a very successful start. So we've gone from five string mentors and then added 10 wind and percussion mentors to go into the schools and help those students as well. So yes, it's a very high number of kids who are, are being uh, positively influenced and, and benefiting from instruction from our SONA musicians. I love that. And I have, still being in the classroom myself, you know, there's standards and different things that as teachers that we have to meet. And by the end of the year, when there's been testing and all kind of other stuff, to have mentors and partners come in to help fill that gap in those holes that you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get it all in. Yes. That's so incredibly helpful. And I am so thrilled that SONA is filling that, that hedge, that gap for our teachers. And so, yay, that's awesome, Natalie. Yeah. Um, you know, I was looking um, uh, at NAFME, it's the National Association of Music Education, and they have a really great uh, quote about this month on uh, music in the school. So I wanted to read it, and I also wanted to give them credit, so I didn't like claim this as being like ours or Sona's. Um, but the purpose of National uh, Music in the Schools is to raise awareness of the importance of music education for all children. And I think that should be like in bold, all children, <laughs> and to remind citizens that school that school is where all children should have access to music, and it is important for music teachers to bring their music program to the attention of schools and the community. Often we are looked at, this is my sub like comment right here, <laughs> often we're looked at as the entertainment, but really there's right. such incredible uh, intrinsic value to what we bring. Yes. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, so back to what? they said. So uh, to display the benefits that school brings to uh, students of all ages and the events surrounding are ideal opportunities for increasing awareness and to benefit um, high quality music education programs in our nation's schools. So I thought that just really summed up what here at SONA, we are so passionate about helping to come along behind our teachers to help make them successful. 
So yes, I, absolutely. I th- and I think what you said about, you know, we're often seen as the entertainment or it's just, oh, it's just, um, you know, an extracurricular or whatever, but man, the research is out there. You just Google and look for it. It's readily available of how students who are involved in music uh, consistently have higher test scores, their interpersonal skills, I I, I believe are even um, positively affected. I mean, the teamwork that you learn in a school music setting is, you know, incredible. And um, I remember a stat that has stuck with me and Lord knows how long it's been since I read this, but uh, medical schools accept more musicians than any other like subset of type of students. So parents, if you want your kids <laughs> to be set up for success, get an instrument in their hands or or get some voice lessons or get them in the choir. I mean, there's, even if your family isn't maybe inherently musical, neither of my parents um, were musical. My mom, you know, has always still continues to talk about, I wish I would have learned how to play an instrument. My dad <laughs> says, well, I can, uh, I can play the radio. <laughs> Does that count? And, yeah, and uh, but they always supported me pr- uh, pursuing music, uh, not just as something fun to do and fun to be a part of, but uh, even when I decided, you know, in high school, like I'm going to really pursue this as a career, they supported that. And so I think, you know, even if your kiddo is not super sure, they should try it. And I don't, you know, every school situation is different. And that's the other thing that's great about March being the month uh, where we celebrate music in our schools month, this time of year, if it hasn't already started in your child's school district, it's about to start. So make sure you're reading those emails and checking the newsletters so that whenever it's time for kids to sign up for um, band or choir or orchestra, that you've got that information uh, readily available and and you know uh, where to have your kids and when to get them signed up for those organizations. Yeah, and we will have a place, uh, we were just talking about this, that on our Symphony of Northwest Arkansas, our website, there is a place for education, and we're going to have a place that will put some of these resources for our teachers and even parents if they want to look at it to help make that easier for them as they navigate some of these things that are not always uh, not sure how that what that looks like. Right. Um, so we want to do a little bit of background introductions. I know we're talking about music in the schools, but Natalie and myself, we both have been uh, seasoned music teachers. So I want to give Natalie a chance to speak about that, and then I'll share a little bit about mine. And then we want to give you some great uh, resources and information to back up why we believe uh, music in the schools is so powerful. Absolutely. Uh, so I joined my school's band when I was in the sixth grade, which is the year that instrumental music started there. I went to a very small school. Um, I knew by the time I was in seventh grade that I wanted to be a band director. Um, I even, even as a young person was keenly aware that being part of that group gave me somewhere to belong. And it gave, um, other kids who maybe weren't all-star students or weren't really into athletics or whatever, it gave everybody a place to belong in and a built-in set of friends and a social group to be a part of. Um, So I I never did waver from that. I I didn't flip-flop around. So that's very unusual. (laughs) Most people will change their minds or change their majors a couple of times. And I stayed the course and uh, graduated from Oklahoma State University with a degree in instrumental music education. I am originally from Oklahoma. And so I taught over there for six years before moving over here to Bentonville. And I taught the most recent decade teaching um, beginning band all day at two different middle schools here in the district. Um, My husband is also a band director. He's uh, the district percussion coordinator for our um, school district. And so there's a lot of music going in on our on in our household, (laughs) as you can tell. Um, But yeah, I just even though I, I left the classroom, I this role was perfect, you know, because it's still absolutely hands-on music education. And I feel so proud to be a part of it. And um, I just think that it's incredible. It's just invaluable. It's priceless to have for your child to have an opportunity to participate in music during their school years. I love that, Natalie. That's awesome. And we are so grateful to have you at Sona. You bring such an incredible wealth of background and information, but just like talent and um, and just passion. So we're so grateful for that. My story was similar to yours. I, um, although I did, I started playing the piano when I was four and singing um, and did that all through elementary school. And then and when I hit middle school, I started playing the flute in sixth grade band and that stuck all the way through. 
uh, and then switched into orchestra. And then college was a music performance major, vocal major, and then went into teaching on top of that and then taught in um, a private um, uh, all girls uh, school and all boys school uh, was like kind of our, our brother school across town. Um, uh, and I did that for about 10 years and then went back to school and got my double masters in conducting and in education. And then most recently got another masters in teaching arts. You would think I have plenty of degrees at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've been teaching at the collegiate level as well since 2015 um, and some of our uh, local colleges and universities here in town. So definitely on the education side outside of just conducting, I think I um, like Natalie bring a lot to the table of experience. And yes, it is so important. The intrinsic value that a music teacher brings to the classroom, not just from um, the higher levels, because I've taught from beginner to um the college, but what happens now uh, in the classroom is so crucial. Um, the teachers always say that teachers can make or break students. And, you know, I think that it's definitely music. That's, it's a huge, huge thing that, that they um, make great kids and teach them well. So we're so thankful for this focus this time of year for our teachers in the school. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about how to observe national music in our schools month. So you're like, observe like it's like a national day <laughs> so I, I found these on um the um NAFME it's their national music educators website so again these are not ours but I thought they were so powerful mm -hmm. and just resonated with where we at Sona believe for music education so not and I we put our heads together like yes we should share these and we'll put these out on our website as well so if you're if we go too fast you're like oh I'm driving down the car and listening to this or don't have something to write with, you'll have access to them. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing is to donate to a great cause. So if you feel strongly um, in, about uh, the importance of music education, maybe if you are a donor or a patron to, to Sona, or just in our community here in Arkansas, and you want to help support our effort, what Natalie's doing, getting the mentors in the school, because that there's costs with that, mm -hmm. or getting kids to our concerts coming up in April, or just coming to our concerts in general, there are many different ways to donate. And I think, uh, Natalie, I don't know if you want to speak to that at all. Um, yeah, so there is cost associated with um, compensating our mentors for going into the schools. And so we would love to continue to expand that program. And so anybody who, um, you know, so, is sitting in their chair and saying, yes, I'm behind mm -hmm. that, and you want to help us with that financially, we would absolutely welcome those donations. Yes, yes. And then to create a music, these are just some fun things to do, right? Mm -hmm. So to help support this month. So I'm all about being the creative person that I am. Uh, uh, create a music theme calendar. I don't know, there's things all float around, like for music teachers, 30 days of happiness as a teacher, like do something a day that makes you happy, right? So this is 30 days uh, on a music theme calendar, whether you're a parent, teacher, or you know someone that has a child that you can impress with music appreciation. So during this month, Every day, pick a different theme like jazz, bluegrass, mm -hmm. uh, classic rock, techno, any, any of those, right? Yeah. You know, there's no genre that is off the limits, right? Um, but to make it age, age appropriate, right? You know, uh, but <laughs> so, but to celebrate music, right? You know, all of it has value. And so those are just some ways to celebrate. So every day it's on the forefront of your thoughts, like, oh yeah, this is music today. Uh, or I learn how to even discussing uh, music of different cultures, right? Um, oh, that, that, of course, cross-curricular, cross-cultural uh, bounds. So not just limiting yourself to what you might hear on American radio. Does, is radio, yeah, I guess radio is still a thing, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, American Spotify, Spotify. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, open open their ears even when they're young and so that they're not so turned, uh, you know, turned off or taken aback by something that sounds different than what they hear all the time. But um, maybe even take a moment to discuss why that music is important to that culture. I think that's important too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you in my school, I teach also at a tar charter Title One uh, all girls school, and so we focus on STEM. And so one of the things that we do in the fall is a PBL project on creating instruments from recycled materials, yeah. and also translate it to students that are across. Um, 
the the world from us that don't have access to the instruments and music that they do and so often a lot of them will build their own instruments you know if you've probably seen the vegetable orchestra um, right. but they they built instruments from recycled materials and it's just really cool to see that process so maybe some of our teachers out there you're looking for things to do coming up in april after testing going into may maybe do a pbl project yeah we'll go, you know um so or learn how to play an instrument that was the third thing on here so I, I just threw that part in there that wasn't part of uh, the national music education focus but I really think that that's a really cool part but I know some of our patrons that um like you were talking about your parents that ne never learn to play an instrument maybe this is the month that they pick it back up and say All right, I'm gonna try it's never too late to learn yeah, um <laughs> Uh, all right. And then the second focus is why National Music in Our Schools Month is important is that music can make you smarter. There are so many studies that are done out there. Maybe, Natalie, you want to speak a little bit about this? Yeah. So, I mean, there's all kinds of studies that show that uh, students um, test better. Um, it really increases their um, attention span and their ability to focus. So um, there's so much about playing an instrument is just so physical, right? So you're really uh, physically connect connected to the instrument and that of course will help wake your brain up. Um, so uh, listening to music even, not just performing it, but listening to music can help increase academic scores as well. So if you're trying to study for a big test or something, put on some Beethoven or some Mozart and see if that can kind of give you some uh, brain power from from what you're listening to. Um, and I think everybody can attest to this, that music helps you relax um, in, an, in an age and a time where we're all very much talking about mental health and self-care. Um, using music as a relaxation te technique is absolutely um, an incredibly valid way of, of showing yourself some self-care. Um, if you're overwhelmed, I know, I mean, I, I still do this as a musician who this is my life. I still can turn on a certain type of music or a certain artist or a certain instrument and absolutely feel all those anxieties kind of melting away. So there's definitely a uh, validity in that. Yeah, um, and I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to tell a tag on to what you were saying about how whatever you're feeling, the, the music can help calm. And I talked to my kids about that, you know, about the power of the of music on our emotions. They can make you feel happy, sad, all of those things. And, and it's like your own like personal therapist. Right, yeah, so. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then the third point that they have here on the list is that music education increases college acceptance rates. It's yeah. true, folks. It's true. Uh, they believe that there's uh, researchers believe that there's a link between musical appreciation and test scores. And it says one study indicated that students who have received exposure to music education scored significantly higher SAT scores than their non music listening counterparts. So you know, even if you're not physically playing an instrument or if you're in a choir or even if you're just a musical person and you just have an appreciation and a love for it and you're listening to it and consuming it a lot, um, that's going to make a difference in your academic performance for sure. Yeah, and I can attest to that. Many of my students in my upper ensembles, they are in what we, my school, we call the 25 plus club that yeah, they really push it, the charter school to have, you know, excellence on their ACT, SAT scores. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I can say, well, their music and that really helps. There are some of what we would call our high flyers, our honor students. But, you know, I think you could, teachers that are listening to us, they could even take this information and present it to um, their principles, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. the arts get, um, not sometimes often they get put to the back burner. You don't get the funding that you want or the schedules you want for your kids for next year. You can say, well, wait a second. You want these scores for funding for you to be able to have these resources coming in from the government. So, but this is proven information that you let our kids come to music. It's going to make it all better. So I, right. it's, this is incredible data. That, yeah, you know, absolutely. That is a big thing. Mm hmm by data. Yep. Um, so talk about a little bit about the resources that you found, Natalie, that we're going to put on the resources for teachers and our supporters. That's yeah. Simple. So I found this really awesome YouTube video that was put together by one of our military bands. I believe it was the president's own, um, which is the Marines, right? Yeah. I think yes. it was. yeah. And they, uh, it's why choose to be in band, choir, or orchestra. And it's, so it's kind of directed toward families who are you've got a kid who's in that age range, right? It's maybe it's about time to start signing up for one of those school groups. 
And it's just a really good, it, it interviews some of the musicians and kind of gives their perspective on, well, I was probably always destined to be a musician because my dad was a band director, but then another person didn't, they didn't come from that background. And so it just talks about the ways that music has enriched their lives. And um, I mean, those are people, they're career musicians, but they're still very much serving in our military in that capacity. So that's another way that parents need to kind of keep that in mind as well is that there are opportunities beyond just playing, you know, in a professional organization or being a teacher music, there's a lot of avenues to be able to, to have music as a career or just as a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's not a very long video. I think I looked at it. No, it's, it's not bad. It's like maybe 15, 20 minutes or something. It's good. A lot of good stuff. Right. It's a, it has, it, if you're looking for some, you know, things to help back up for when you go to talk to your new t- new not principals, but talk to your principals, or if you have new families coming in that are on the, on the mm-hmm. wall, whether or not they really want to do this for their children say, Hey, watch this. This may be right. absolutely and on it. So we want to um, finish up today, but we want to talk about a little bit about our outreach concerts that are coming up uh, in April. Do you want to speak to that a little bit, Natalie? And then I'll talk a little bit about what's going to happen at the concert. Sure, sure. So we're offering two outreach concerts this April. Um, the first one is on Friday, April 7th at 10 a.m. at the Walton Arts Center. It's going to be part of their uh, classroom series um, of, of offerings. And then we're doing the same program later that month on April 20, I always get it messed up. Is it the 28th? Yes, Friday the 28th um, at 10 a.m. at Springdale High School in their uh, Performing Arts Center. Um, I have been sending out emails to music teachers in Northwest Arkansas for the last couple of weeks. If for some reason you're watching this and you have not gotten one from me, send me an email. But um, we're taking um, RSVPs for those events. So um, we do offer busing subsidies as well. Uh, so if, you know, having to get transportation for your students, if that cost is an issue, definitely send me an email because that's, we can work with you on that. Um, but this is open to junior high and high school students all across Northwest Arkansas, um, homeschool students, uh, anybody who is interested and wants to come see Sona perform on the stage. It's a different program than what they're going to be playing the following day on Saturday at the Walton Arts Center. So this is geared specifically towards students. And we just, you know, for a lot of these kids that are going to be in attendance, this is may, may very well be their first time getting to see a professional group perform live on stage um, and particularly to be in an audience of their peers. I think that's a really uh, valuable aspect of the concerts as well. But yes, Sarah, you're our conductor. So you want to tell us a little bit about what the program is going to be about. So I'm so excited. So we were thinking about the the program this year and, and what what did we want our students to come away with? Obviously, we want them to come away with an incredible experience and see the um, music that Sona can bring to a concert. And we want to encourage them to come to our concerts. They can get free tickets with, I think, each paying adult, adult that attends. Um, yeah, yeah. So plug, free tickets for you <laughs> if you're 18 or under and you would like uh, to go to a Sona main stage concert at Walton Arts Center, you can get a free ticket with every regular adult purchase ticket um, kids can go for free. And that's not, that, ha- that doesn't have to be associated as a school trip or anything like that. That's just families with kids. Your kids can go for free with the regular adult purchase tickets, but. That's also a great plug again for music in the schools, because, you know, if parents are still trying, and these are for teachers too, if, if, te- if parents are trying to decide, I don't know, they want to play the, mm-hmm. they play the violin, they want to play, you know, a brass instrument, go to a live concert with them. Yeah. See what that what what that culminating experience looks like right you know yeah, the- absolutely but that's part of the journey um so but um uh, back to kind of the concert we built um uh it's just about it right at an hour because that's kind of our time frame um but we are going to talk about uh and play music that is surrounded by a theme the title is what is a theme uh, themes are ideas that come up again and again whether it's characters music events books or plays. I mean, there's, it's like an overarching thing. There's always something that ties it together. Mm -hmm. Uh, That can be concepts of love, revenge, forgiveness, uh, judgment. Um, And even in music, this happens. The notes that you play can um, be repeating symbols. I think one of our pieces is Beethoven five. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the da 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 da, right? So that is a repeating uh, note and symbols that happen that become like motives. We call those little themes. Um, phrases that appear again and again and have specific meaning. So we're going to talk about music that has 
a variety of themes and really help students walk away with like, oh, when I hear that, now I know what that is. Yeah. But some of them don't. I think we take that for granted as music teachers and as musicians that everyone understands that and not everyone right. does. Right. Um, but the overarching goal is that students will be able to identify and describe a variety of themes, just like I spoke about and found in music and in life, be able to yeah. kind of connect together yeah and I love the program you put together because there's going to be music that they will without a doubt recognize from having heard somewhere at some point in their life but then there's we're going to be able to expose them to a bunch of hopefully uh, stuff they've never heard as well so that'll be great there's a new piece by well not new but Rachel Portman um female composer from Emma um that and then there is music from video game Yep. Um, Captain Marvel, then some of the classics like Beethoven, uh, William Till, Finale Overture, uh, Hold Down. So I think there's something for everyone, but ultimately it's all tied together by what is a theme. And so that uh, learning why students are understanding what that, how that through music and life all collaborate together. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So yeah if you're watching this and you um, want to go, we are still definitely taking RSVPs. I'm still sending out email invitation reminders so uh you know talk to your admins and, and get the go ahead to bring your kiddos to these concerts because it's going to be amazing yeah. and music is such a gift and after the crazy times that we have mm -hmm. this is uh, this is an hour for your kiddos to come and just decompress and it's kind of like one of the movies right you know right. Go to the for escapism this is an hour of escapism to not only learn but to be able to relax and be able to um, get smarter for all the testing and things. Yeah. Like <laughs> and to help you in your classroom to just reaffirm that everything that you've been doing is correct and, and not send them on the right trajectory. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So I think this concludes our time, Natalie, together. Um, we are so uh, grateful that Sona celebrates music in the schools mm -hmm. and we celebrate you helping lead that charge for Sona and then just our teachers. We can't thank you enough for what you do for our community and for um, for Sona ultimately. Uh, and, and we are just so excited about what's upcoming for the spring. Um, and Natalie, do you have anything as we're finishing out? Nope, that's pretty much it. But yeah, because if if you let me keep talking, I'd, it, <laughs> as for both of us, it's a very passionate subject. So we probably better wrap it up. But anybody ever wants to talk shop about music ed? I'm here for you. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, everyone, we hope to see you all soon. Uh, and we will um, look forward to seeing you in April. And thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye.